welcome to this uh, new video where you will see that how we can uh, use the python or you can write a python code to send some data to things big website so basically this is about sending data to cloud you can see this website there are some data is there and this is being uh, done by the python code i have written so uh, for this i'll i'll be using jupyter lab in this case we'll be writing some codes which is maximum 10 line of code will be there and we can we will be able to send a data to the cloud so first let me do one thing so if you have a account in things pick you can go through uh, open the account or else you can create an account it's free account so once you log into the things pick uh, website then you will find this page and here you have to go to the channels so what is this channels basically channel is the uh, user interface or web interface i can say in inside which we are going to publish the data so i already have two channels here so let me create a new channel. So once you first log into the website, you will find this new channel. So just uh, uh, create this new channel, whatever name you want, you can give that. So let me write my channel name here, my YouTube channel name here. And the description part, you can leave it empty. It's not uh, mandatory to write. And then here you can see there are multiple fields are there. That means field one is basically uh, getting the variable value from the program. So for the time being, let me just write here data one. Uh, because I'm just going to send some data, random data I want to I want to create and send. And right now I am going to send only one variable here. So I am just by default only one is tick here. So if you click on this, then it will uh, enable the second data also. But right now we are not going to do that. First we will just see that how you can send only one data. So after all this, you need to create the save channel. Click on the save channel. So all other settings, uh, nothing to do there. So once you click on the save channel, you will see one graph will come out here, which has no data you can see because we have not written the program. So once you write the program, then we can visualize the data here. So inside that, what else we need to do? We need an API key. So API key means uh, application program interfacing. Basically, API key is the, uh, will be serving as an address for us to where to send the data. So from the program, I am going to send the data, but where to send this API key is the address for that. So that I will click on API keys. So once you click on the API key, you will see this window will come and here write API key is written. So basically this write, write API key is what we need to create our program. And if you go little below, you can see write a channel feed is also written and here one URL is written. So we'll be using this URL directly. I, I, in the program, we'll see that where to use it. Okay, so let's start the program here. So uh, to send data to your cloud, so we need one library called as requests. Okay, so first we have to import this library request. Then I have to import a library called as time. So why the time library is required that I will discuss later when it will be used. Okay, now I have imported the required libraries here. So after that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run it through a while loop. So I'll just write while one. Why I'm doing the while loop? Because I want the data to go on continuously. It will be continuously sending the data. So, so the, uh, for that only, I am just writing the while loop here. Fine. So next is, uh, let me print some message before I send the data. So I just want to print that sending data so that I know that the program has started working. So I'll just write sending data and this dot 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 I'm just writing. And after that, uh, we can write end equals to inside that I'll write slash r. So what this will do here is so once the sending data is completed, once when the new line will be written, so it will overwrite that sending data. So that sending data won't be visible for the next time it executes. So it will be easy. We will see that what happens there. So next we need the data. Fine. So let me write a variable that is data. And uh, here we can generate a random number also or we can give the user, inter user inter uh, input also. So let me take a user input here. So I'll take a value which is an integer type because things speak will, will be only accepting integer values and just write data equals to integer type and here I'm going to take the input. So how to write these things? You can see my previous videos that I have written how to take integer input. So here I'll write enter the 
data to send okay in this i am writing enter the data to send but if uh, if you are using this code in the raspberry pi so whatever sensor is connected there from there you can get the data and uh, uh, use it so next is we need to send the data to a website right so for that we need a url here so where to get the url so you can see i shown this uh, website here so basically this is my url so just copy paste all this i'll explain what is there inside this url so copy paste this url and you paste it here as a string okay so i'm just pasting as a string that's why i have given the quotes here so see the first part of this http slash api thinspeak.com it is the website then update is the, the like it's a command that i want to update the update the data in this website and then here api key is written so this api key is nothing but so same thing here so this api key is available here that is what being written here so this api key is the address to this particular channel so next field 1 is equals to 0 so the default value here is uh, field 1 is equals to 0 after that what you are going to do whatever our data we need to send so that i will write plus here and the data uh, this url is being a string here so for that i need to string data and then here i will convert this i will write the data here so what i have done so the data i am taking input from the user here i am adding that to the url so what it will do it will just add that value to the url and so that we can send the data now next is how do we know that the whatever data is sent it it is successfully sending the data or not so for that i will take a variable here let me take the variable as response and response equals to there is a command we will write request dot get in bracket will write url okay so what it is going to do so once the data is sent to the internet so in any um, HTTP connection is there then what it will do it will ask for a response code if the response code is 200 then uh, the um, sending data is uh, successful so that is just uh, I wanted to know that whether the successful data is sending or not otherwise the program will keep running and we won't be able to know whether it's sending the data or not fine so next I'll just print this response code okay I'll just print this response and then i want to print the data that i sent or sent also so i'll write here sent data so send data then comma i'll just write whatever data i am going to send there fine so that's it the program so only this much program is required to send your data next is so things big website generally gets updated um, uh, updates the value in every 15 second of interval so uh, here you can see this uh, graph you see here that right now there is no data but once it starts getting the data in every 15 sec 15 second it is going to get update so for that here i need to add one more thing in the program with the time dot sleep okay so that's why i have imported the library time here so time dot sleep in bracket i'll write 15 that means for 15 second it is going to wait then it will execute the uh, program again fine so if it continuously get executed then it will send the data but this things speak website will not be updating the data so means there is a there can be a miscommunication some data is sent but it won't be displayed here so for that we are making sure that in every 15 second delay i am going to send a data fine so this is the complete program so let us run the program now so if uh, i am running the program it is entering enter the data to send let me send 10 here so if i enter 10 see it is waiting and uh, response is not defined so i think it is a spelling mistake here just okay fine so let me run it again let me send 15 here so next it is going to get the response from the url that the response came is 200 fine so now send data is 15 let us see here so what data we have got we got the value you can see uh data is 10 okay so let me take 20 here i'll hit enter so we'll be waiting for some time then we'll see that what data is getting updated here so as i said it always take 15 second to 
uh, get updated now you can see the data received is 10 here fine so next i uh, let me enter 30 here so if i enter 30 so data sent is 30 now here we will wait to see what what data is coming here so you can see now the data received here is 30 so in this uh, channel also you can do one more thing you can go to add widgets here if you want to see the numerical value you can go to this numeric display click on next and then it will ask that which variable you want to print here we have only one variable that is field one and by default update interval is 15 so just create one so what it will do here is whatever data is coming it will just display the numerical value for that fine so let me enter here 5 some data i want to send here so if i enter 5 so let's see what happens in this website so now the new data came here is equals to 5 fine so this is how you can write a simple code to send your data from your python program or raspberry pi to the things website in the next uh, video we'll see that how you can send multiple values or multiple data to the website um, so see the next video thank you